Welcome to Hoaxie Gardens and Homestead. I am going to harvest some of my longevity spinach so that I can start rooting it inside of my sunroom. Now, I've got another month or so of growing on this, so there's not like this big rush to do it, except that it'll take about a month for it to start rooting and then start growing. And then by the time that I don't have longevity spinach out in my garden, I will be able to harvest what's growing in my sunroom. And I did this last year, it worked out perfect, so I'm going to do it again this year. Now not only that, come springtime, I'll have longevity spinach to plant out or give away. Where I have this planted is going to come back. Everywhere that I have it throughout my garden, I think like 10 different places, it's, it's going to come back, but uh, I can spread it out even further, have even more, because I, I eat it every day in my salads, so I do use a lot of it, as with all my greens. That's why I have um, the greens in so many different areas, because we eat it every day in our salads, me and my husband. So that's why I like having a lot of it in different places. And on top of that, um, in permaculture, this is an understory. So, uh, in fact, it's almost a viner. Uh, longevity spinach will grow up tall, and then it gets really heavy, so it starts laying over, and it spreads out. And kind of like the Egyptian spinach, everywhere you take a leaf off, it's going to root out another stem. So, you start with, like this patch right here, started with four little plants. And it's huge, taking over this area. So I'm going to take a few from this one, I'm going to take a few from this one, and I'm going to go in and plant them, get them started rooting, and I'll show you how I do that. Now, I usually get, I want my stem to be about as long as my hand, because if I do that, I'm going to have at least three leaves on it, which are going to be removed, but those nodes are where the roots are going to come out, so that's what I'm going to want to do. So what I do actually is I grab at the top, I know where my finger goes down, and now you're gonna wanna clip right, this is the leaf, there's the node, you're gonna clip right above that. Now when I go to transplant it, I'm gonna clip this off, and then I'll remove those leaves, but these leaves will not be a waste because I will eat them. So I'm going to harvest a good bit right here and then I'll take it into the sunroom. Well, they say you are what you eat, and if that's true, one of the things you want to be eating is longevity spinach. And for people with diabetes, it is very true. Um, what you eat is very important. The thing about longevity spinach is it will help you to lower your blood sugar. Um, there are a lot of foods that will do that, especially greens. Longevity spinach has really gained popularity in the United States in the past few years, and um, I think that's probably uh, due to a lot with John Kohler and even Jake Mace um, talk about longevity spinach. But it originated in China and um, you know the Southeast Asia and Africa and in that area and due to all its benefits that's why it's seeing such a popularity these days. The Chinese have been using this plant for as long back as it can be recorded to, uh, for medicinal reasons. And lately it's really been uh, given the nickname of cholesterol spinach because it helps to lower your cholesterol. Okay, not only is longevity spinach known for treating diabetes and lowering your cholesterol, but it also helps to lower your blood pressure. So if you have high blood pressure, this is the plant that you need to be eating. It is also an anti-inflammatory, which is one of the reasons why it is very good for me to be eating. Uh, inflammation is one of the key causes of Crohn's disease. It contains bioactive steroids and alkaloids, and these things are good for your treating rheumatism, 
arthritis, um, any kind of a joint pain that you have. <laughs> um, longevity spinach will grow well either in the sh uh, you know shade, partial shade, or sun, either way. This one in the sun grows really, really good. I have another one over there that is full sun, and it grows real good. I have one um, in the front that is in partial shade, grows really, really good. So no matter where you put your longevity spinach, it is gonna grow really well for you. In general, longevity spinach is pest free, unlike this kale, <laughs> which can get eaten up by a lot of different things. The longevity, because it's a brassica, the longevity spinach, it doesn't have that problem. Um, it's pretty much pest free, as is your Egyptian spinach. Um, as with always, talk to your doctor before starting something new into your diet. And also, when I tell you that, say this for instance, it is, uh, it's good for diabetes, it helps lower your blood sugar, or it lowers your um, cholesterol, or your high blood pressure. I'm not telling you to start eating this and get off your medications, but when you add these things to your diet, the need for these medications will decrease. Okay. You can see right here where this leaf is, I just cut off right there, but it's already starting to vine out right here. So we're going to have another shoot that comes out here, and I haven't even removed that leaf. Got that right over here also. Yeah, right there. Yeah. Yep. Very healthy plant. Very productive plant. Yep. Okay. I got the stems in from one of the uh, longevity spinach plants and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all these leaves off the bottom I'm just going to leave this top few right here that's all you're going to leave in fact you could even take this one off and I'm going to put them back in the bowl because I am not throwing these away they're gold um, then I'll lay this aside and I'll do this with the whole bowl and um, the reason you do that is because where we pull these leaves off, that's where the roots are going to come out. And um, you don't want a lot of leaves on there because you don't want the energy focused on, you know, taking care of these leaves. You want the energy focused on the roots. So that's why you take off most of the leaves. Now there are some people that take all the leaves off. I'm not one of those people, but... It wouldn't hurt if you do, it'll still root and then it'll start putting out leaves. Now again, the whole reason for my doing this um, isn't just to propagate the uh, longevity spinach. It is so in the winter time and early spring when I don't have longevity spinach out in my garden, I will have it in here that I'll be able to start harvesting from by the time that one goes by the way. And um, as I said, I eat it every day. It's one of the nutritional things that I do for my health. Um, in fact, I went to the doctor today and had all my blood work done. <laughs> Actually, I tried to get by with just doing my thyroid. So I had the nurse pull the thyroid, the blood for the thyroid out of here. And because it's just two miles and uh, thought I'd got away with it. Till the doc came in <laughs> and so I ended up having to get all of it because it had been too long and we need to check everything and um, I didn't want to do that because that is all together including the two from the thyroid that's 12 vials of blood and uh, but I must say the young lady Linda that did my blood I never knew when she poked me and, uh, you know, when I talk about this doctor, too, this is not the doctor that I talk about that had me on all the medications that I felt like were killing me. That was a specialist that was doing that. I'm very blessed with the doctor that I have because he um, doesn't get on to me about my diet. He doesn't insist that I eat a lot of red meat. 
Um, he thinks that the plant-based whole food diet is the best, and so that's really good for me. He also is not a pill pusher. Um, there's a place for them, and when necessary, you know, he will prescribe them, but um, he, he doesn't constantly push pills on you. So, I love my doc. He's a great doctor. In fact, everybody in that office is. Always, oop, mess that one up. So that one's, that one's salad for sure. And this is from one plant. And um, I have got 10 more to do. Now, this year, I do not know that I am going to take from every single one of my plants. Last year, I took the all the tops off of every plant that I had. But um, all, them all the plants that I had last year came back, plus I planted the 21 that I had harvested and grew in here for the winter. And you know, there are a couple of plants out there that I'm going to try to see if maybe I can dig up and have grow in here uh, during the winter you know, it doesn't hurt to experiment. Always experiment. Now, I have the soil ready here. And, um, okay. So, when you go to plant. I already have my soil ready. Um, I didn't go over that because we had gone through that book before. But you're going to come up to this first node and you're going to cut right to the bottom of that. You don't want all this extra green there. And then you're going to take your cup. Now it's very important that the dirt comes in contact with the stem. You don't want air pockets on your stem. So what I do is uh, put a little in the bottom. I put that in to where I know it needs to be. Push it down into that soil just a little bit. And then I'm going to fill it up. And I'm going to push it down just a little bit. You know, with most of these things, you don't really push. Like when you're putting your seeds in and stuff, you want it to be very airy. Which this you do too, but and then I'm going to tap it just a little bit. Make sure it's gotten in all around the, all around the stem. And there I have my first one, and I'm going to do all the rest of them like that. And then I'm going to have a bowl full of greens that I can use in my salads for the next week. And uh, so that's awesome. Now, longevity spinach is great in your salads raw. It is, uh, it's great in stews, soups. It is, uh, it's good with scrambled eggs. Um, just about anything you can use regular spinach for, you can use longevity spinach. And in my view, it has a lot better flavor. So this is what I'm gonna be doing pretty much for the rest of the day. Um, this and and trying to dig up some of the other things and and yes i do have plenty of time but i want to be sure that it has a lot of time to acclimate to the different area because they've been out in the sun out in the weather and now i'm bringing them into the sunroom now i'll open up my window so they'll get a good airflow for a while and so it won't be such a difference um, in the uh, atmosphere for the for the plants but I uh, didn't have a problem last year, and I don't expect to have one this year. So uh, if you have longevity spinach growing, this is something that you can do to uh, get it through the winter and so that you'll have stuff to harvest through the winter. And also other plants, uh, you can take cuttings, and we'll be doing a video on that because I'm going to be doing my Thai basil and my um, pineapple sage. I did that last year, had great success with it, and I'm going to do it again this year because I want it more out through my garden. Okay, so, so I've got my first tray done. Now we, um, we've we wet the planting medium before we start everything because peat moss, um, once you get it into the, thing, the containers, it's really hard to get wet and you can't do it from the top. We're going to do it from the bottom. So, um, now that I've got this first row planted, and this is just the first, I've got, I'll have several of these containers. There's 15 in this one. So I'll come up at the bottom, and I'll fill it for about an inch, 
and it'll soak all that water up even though it's it's moist now it's going to soak all that water up A little bit more. So there you go. You see, it's really easy to um, propagate your plants. And it's the same even with um, the others that I'm going to be doing. It's going to be the same principle. Um, I will be doing them in smaller containers. I do this one because I'm going to have them growing for a long time, and I'm starting them about a month before I'll start my others. So there you go. I hope you try propagating. And you know what? If you don't succeed the first time that you do it, don't fret. Try it again. Um, you don't always succeed at everything the first time. Uh, a lot of the greats will tell you that they have more failures than successes but it's those failures that they learn from and when they continue on, they become some of the greatest, the greatest there is of favorite. Okay, pardon the dirty hands. But another thing, with your longevity spinach, you don't need to use a growth hormone as you do with some of the other things. Um, it has plenty enough on its own. Does that mean you can't use it? No, if you would feel safer in doing it, uh, Go ahead and use the growth hormone, won't hurt, but there's not a need for it. Why do it if you don't need it? So uh, there you have it. I've got two trays, I've got 30 plants, and, um, and this is just from one little bush area that started with four of these, and that's what you saw what I got out of it. And I've been eating on them all summer long all year long actually because the ones that I put out there I had been eating on all winter and that's the importance of having it all throughout your yard or garden um, since we use all our yard for gardening I say throughout your yard but um, the reason for is because you know this time you can harvest from this plant and this time you can harvest from that plant another time you can harvest from another plant so uh, you're constantly rotating where you're harvesting from and you're not going to stress out any one plant and that way you can eat it every day and your salads all week see so thank you for joining me um, i hope that this was informative for you and i hope that you search out and get some longevity spinach um, if you can find an asian nursery near you uh, call around i do think i'm not real positive so I'm not going to say you could absolutely, but I do think that Baker's Creek, Baker Creek uh, seeds, they do living plants, and I do believe that they do longevity spinach. I'm not real positive about that, but it's worth the check because anything you get from Baker Creek is going to be quality. So uh, thank you for joining me. Hope you have a great day and good gardening.